Every year, billions of pounds of seaweed are harvested from the ocean and transformed into everything from sushi wraps and snacks to fertilizer, cosmetics, and biofuel. But how is this slippery ocean plant farmed, collected, and processed at an industrial scale? Today, we dive deep into the underwater world of seaweed cultivation. Explore how farmers grow it from tiny spores to massive underwater forests and follow the incredible journey of seaweed from sea to shelf. Coming up, the ocean ropes, the drying fields, the blenders, and the bioreactors that power one of the most sustainable industries on Earth. This is how billions of seaweed are harvested and processed. Seaweed farming is one of the oldest forms of aquaculture and one of the fastest growing today. It all begins in a hatchery. Here, microscopic seaweed spores are cultured under precise temperature and lighting conditions. These spores are carefully attached to ropes made of biodegradable material, or nylon, which will later be deployed in the sea. Once the spores begin to grow, the seeded ropes are transferred to ocean farms. These are large underwater grids made of anchored buoys, ropes, and floats, often located in shallow coastal waters with good sunlight and strong nutrient currents. Over the next 30 to 60 days, the seaweed grows rapidly, absorbing CO2, nitrogen, and phosphorus from the water while producing oxygen. Some species, like kelp, can grow up to half a meter per day. Farmers inspect their crops regularly by boat, checking for pests, disease, or damage from storms. When the seaweed reaches optimal maturity, usually between 1 and 3 meters long, it's time for harvest. Seaweed harvesting is a mix of tradition and modern engineering. In small farms, seaweed is still harvested by hand. Workers pull ropes onto boats and cut the seaweed with blades or sickles. In larger operations, machines mounted on boats automatically reel in the seeded lines and strip the biomass from the ropes. The freshly harvested seaweed is immediately loaded into baskets or crates and taken to shore. Time is critical. If left in the sun too long, seaweed begins to degrade and lose its texture and nutritional value. Some seaweed, such as nori or wakame, is washed on-site with seawater to remove sand, shells, and small marine life. Next stop, the processing facility. Once on land, the seaweed is thoroughly cleaned using high-pressure water jets or industrial washing tanks. Depending on the species, it's then sorted by size, color, and quality. Any discolored or damaged pieces are removed. Some premium products like sushi-grade nori go through hand sorting. For edible seaweed, the next step is blanching. The seaweed is briefly boiled in hot water, usually for 30 to 60 seconds. This enhances the color, improves texture, and kills any remaining microbes. It's then plunged into cold water to stop the cooking process. The result? Vibrant green seaweed with a slightly firm bite, perfect for salads or snacks. Drying is a crucial stage in seaweed processing. Traditionally, seaweed was sun-dried on bamboo mats or rocks along the coast. Some small farms still use this method today. But in industrial settings, automated dryers take over. The blanched seaweed is spread on conveyor belts and passed through large tunnel dryers that blow heated air, typically between 40 to 60 degrees Celsius, across the product. The goal is to reduce moisture content to below 15%, which prevents mold growth and extends shelf life. The dried seaweed is brittle, lightweight, and shelf-stable. From here, it can be packaged as whole leaves, flaked, shredded, or milled into powder, depending on the end product. Dried seaweed is surprisingly versatile. In the food industry, it's turned into crispy chips, soup ingredients, and sushi sheets. Large rollers press and flatten sheets of nori before they're toasted and cut into uniform rectangles. 
In cosmetics and skin care, seaweed extracts are used for their antioxidant and, and moisturizing properties. This process involves soaking dried seaweed in heated water or ethanol to extract beneficial compounds like alginate, carrageenan, and fucoidan. In agriculture, seaweed is ground into fine powder and turned into natural fertilizers and soil conditioners, rich in minerals and plant hormones. Some processing plants even ferment seaweed to extract bioactives for pharmaceutical use. And increasingly, seaweed is being explored as a source of bioplastic and biofuel, thanks to its high carbohydrate content and rapid regrowth rate. Every batch of seaweed undergoes strict quality control. Samples are tested for heavy metals, microbial content, and residual salt levels. Moisture is measured to ensure shelf stability. For food-grade seaweed, safety regulations require careful testing for pathogens and allergens, especially in export operations to the EU, US, and Japan. Traceability is crucial, from farm to factory to final product. Many large-scale producers now implement blockchain systems to log each step of the journey. Cleanliness, sustainability, and product transparency are top priorities in modern seaweed processing. Once dried, sorted, and inspected, the seaweed is ready to be packaged. Food-grade seaweed is sealed in vacuum packs or nitrogen-flushed bags to preserve freshness. Snack products are heat-sealed and labeled with nutritional information. Powdered seaweed is packed in foil-lined drums or bags with desiccants to keep moisture out. The final products are stored in climate-controlled warehouses and shipped by sea or air to markets around the world, from Tokyo and Seoul to New York and London. From harvest to export, the entire process can take just three to five days, a remarkably short turnaround for a global agricultural commodity. Seaweed isn't just nutritious, it's one of the most sustainable crops on the planet. It requires no fresh water, no fertilizer, and no land. It absorbs carbon, cleanses the ocean, and boosts biodiversity. With the world facing climate change and food insecurity, seaweed is being hailed as a super crop of the future. And thanks to cutting-edge farming techniques, automation, and global demand, the seaweed industry is now worth over $15 billion a year, and growing fast. From underwater ropes to high-tech dryers, from humble harvests to international exports, this is how billions of seaweed are harvested and processed. If you found this video interesting, give it a like, leave a comment, and share it with someone who's curious about how the world works. And of course, subscribe to join our journey through the world's most amazing manufacturing processes. In this episode, we follow tea's full transformation. From the sunlit slopes of tea plantations to the heart of high-tech processing lines, we'll uncover the chemistry, the culture, and the silent mastery behind every sip. The journey begins at dawn, when the world is still quiet and the first light brushes across the slopes. This is the hour of the harvest. Tea is picked at its freshest and most flavorful stage, when the leaves are young and filled with essential oils. For most high-quality teas, only the top two leaves and a single bud are taken, tiny, delicate, and full of potential. Harvesters, often with years of experience, move quietly through the rows of tea bushes. They work quickly, but not carelessly. Their hands know how to judge a leaf by touch alone. They pick selectively, leaving behind anything overgrown or damaged. This is not random. It is precision because every leaf plucked will directly shape the flavor of the final tea. It is labor-intensive and time-consuming. A skilled worker may harvest just 10 to 15 kilograms of fresh leaves in a day. After processing, that becomes only a fraction of finished tea, perhaps two or three kilograms. Each handful is the product of hundreds, sometimes thousands of careful picks. For large-scale operations, mechanical harvesters are used to cover more ground. These machines can collect large volumes quickly, but they lack the finesse of human hands. They often cut indiscriminately, gathering stems and older leaves along with the tender buds. As a result, the flavor may be less refined, the aroma less complex. 
Still, for some types of tea and in certain markets, this trade-off is acceptable. But no matter the method, by hand or machine, harvesting is the tea's first transformation. It's the moment when a living plant becomes a product in motion. From here, the leaves begin their metamorphosis. The next step is withering. It is, quite simply, the process of allowing the freshly picked leaves to rest and lose moisture. But in reality, it is much more than just drying. Withering is the point at which the internal chemistry of the leaf begins to shift. The leaves soften, they begin to droop and lose rigidity. Enzymes within the leaf start to activate, preparing for later stages of oxidation and flavor development. Traditionally, withering is done in open-air shelters or shaded rooms where tea leaves are spread thinly on bamboo mats or mesh racks. The ambient air, assisted by gentle breezes, slowly draws water out of the leaves. This process may take up to 20 hours depending on temperature, humidity, and the type of tea being produced. During this time, leaves may lose up to 30% of their moisture content. In modern facilities, withering is more controlled. Factories use specialized troughs equipped with fans and ventilators to ensure a consistent flow of air. It's time to roll. Rolling is where tea begins to take shape, literally and chemically. After withering, the softened leaves are moved into machines or onto wooden boards where they are twisted, pressed, or kneaded into specific forms. This step doesn't just give tea its familiar curls, twists, or tiny pellets. It also plays a critical role in developing flavor. When a leaf is rolled, its cell walls break open. This releases natural enzymes and essential oils that were previously locked inside. These substances come into contact with oxygen, triggering a series of chemical reactions that will shape the tea's color, aroma, and taste. In other words, rolling activates oxidation, but in a controlled and intentional way. Rolling is one of the most tactile parts of tea making. Even with machines, many tea makers use their hands to inspect the leaves during and after the process. They look for even texture, proper shape, and a distinctive fragrance that begins to emerge, a hint of what the tea will become once the leaves are brewed. Drying removes most of the remaining moisture from the tea, reducing it to just 2 to 4 percent. Without this step, the tea would spoil within days. But more than just preservation, drying defines the tea's final character. The right application of heat stabilizes the flavor profile, deepens the aroma, and adds a final touch to the color of the leaf. There are many methods of drying, depending on tradition, region, and tea type. Too much heat, and the leaves become brittle or develop smoky, off-putting flavors. Too little, and the tea remains damp, vulnerable to mold, loss of aroma, and rapid degradation. As the leaves dry, they begin to curl more tightly, darken slightly, and develop a crisp texture. A faint rustle like footsteps on autumn leaves replaces the earlier softness. This is when tea begins to resemble what we find in our teacups, fragrant, dry, and ready for storage. But even now, the journey isn't over. The dried leaves must still be sorted, graded, and, sometimes, blended before they're packaged and sent across the world. Each of these final stages holds its own complexities, its own decisions, and its own quiet impact on what we eventually taste. Because in the world of tea, even the last steps matter. After drying, tea leaves are sorted and graded to ensure consistency and quality. Though harvested together, the leaves vary in size and shape, factors that affect brewing time, strength, and flavor. Sorting separates whole leaves from broken ones, as well as from fine particles known as fannings and dust. Whole leaves tend to brew slowly and yield a more delicate taste, while smaller particles infuse quickly and more strongly. Modern facilities use vibrating screens and mesh filters to automate this process. Grading goes beyond size. It assesses leaf appearance, aroma, and texture. In some cases, expert tasters perform cuppings to evaluate the liquor's clarity, fragrance, and flavor profile. Grading systems vary by tea type. Black tea uses terms like orange peco or be up, while green and oolong teas focus more on origin and harvest season. This stage prepares the tea for its next transformation, whether blending, flavoring, or packaging. Not all teas are packaged just as they are. 
Many go through a final creative stage, blending and flavoring. Blending combines different batches or types of tea to achieve a consistent flavor, aroma, or color. Especially important for large brands that aim to deliver the same taste year-round. Some blends mix teas from different regions, while others combine leaf grades to balance body and fragrance. Skilled tea blenders rely on both science and instinct, adjusting ratios with precision. Flavoring adds another dimension. Natural ingredients like jasmine flowers, bergamot oil, dried fruit, or herbs are introduced to create distinctive scented teas. Green tea with jasmine, black tea with rose, or chai with spices are all results of this craft. Whether subtle or bold, blending and flavoring shape the identity of many teas. Once complete, the tea is ready to be sealed, shipped, and shared with the world. Once blended and flavored, the tea is ready for packaging, a crucial step that protects its quality and extends its shelf life. Packaging must shield the tea from light, moisture, and air, all of which can degrade flavor and aroma over time. Depending on the product, tea may be packed as loose leaves, in pyramid sachets, or as fine dust in standard tea bags. For premium loose leaf teas, vacuum sealed foil bags or airtight tins are often used to preserve freshness. On automated production lines, machines weigh, fill, and seal thousands of units per hour with impressive precision. Labels provide information about origin, type, grade, and steeping instructions, offering consumers a clear connection to the journey behind each cup. From traditional wrapping in paper to modern, eco-friendly compostable materials, packaging has evolved to meet both commercial and environmental demands. Now the tea is ready to travel across towns, countries, and continents to the moment it meets hot water. From the gentle hills where young leaves are plucked at dawn, to the precise chemistry of oxidation, rolling, drying, and blending, to the final pour of hot water over fragrant leaves, every cup of tea carries with it an invisible journey, a story of soil, seasons, skill, and centuries of tradition. It's easy to think of tea as simple, but the truth is, tea is a masterpiece of patience, precision, and quiet beauty. And the next time you take a sip, you'll know you're not just tasting flavor, you're tasting effort, culture, and time. If you enjoyed this journey from leaf to cup, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We bring you deeper into the hidden worlds behind everyday things, from food and drinks, to the science, craft, and stories that shape them. Hit that subscribe button, tap the bell icon, and join us as we continue exploring the extraordinary behind the ordinary. Your next cup of knowledge starts here.